So I'm going to give a personal view of the Leicester Polytechnic stuff in the early days. <clears throat> so it's a little bit prejudiced towards myself, but anyway. So for me, it started with me making this relief uh, around about 1968. Um, it was an interesting exercise that led to amazing results to me. Perhaps the most important thing was that I wrote a computer program to help me decide on the final analysis of the piece. What I did doesn't matter in detail, but I was working on it and I decided that I wanted to spray the paint rather than paint it with a brush. Now, I was actually at the Leicester College of Technology and I walked across the street to Leicester's College of Art and said, is there anyone here who has a spray booth? And I was introduced to Stroud Cornock, who you see on the screen now. <clears throat> and so he helped me do this because he was an expert on that matter. But our relationship wasn't really about spraying paint at all. It was because he, he realized, as I discussed the work with him, that I'd written a computer program to make it. And Stroud, who, like me, arrived in Leicester at about that time, had come from working with Roy Ascot and was setting up a media center within fine art. He was employed as a sculptor, but he tried to pro progress the use of different media. And the computer was one of those things that really excited him. So we got going in a very exciting way. And it was the same year that cybernetic serendipity was shown in London. Uh, one of the things here is Sam by Edward Inartovich, who will crop up a few more times in my talk. So I use that as an illustration of that particular exhibition, which shows what an exciting time it was. Stroud was very active in promoting new ideas. And in 1970, he also put on this exhibition called The Invention of Problems. A very interesting title if you think about it, because one of the things that is clear about creativity is that it's not really about solving problems, it's much more about defining what the problem is. And I could say much more about that, but I'll skip it. So a very interesting title. And he wrote a short note at the front of this uh, catalogue where he said that uh, we were moving from the notion of the machine as a task performing device to man machine systems and i must tell you that although nowadays we talk about human computer systems back in those days man computer was the normal phrase this was the notion of moving from the machine as a tool to the machine as a medium. And the other thing that was really important here was the collaboration between artists and technologists. Here's that work of mine that I showed you in the exhibition there. In the same year, the Computer Arts Society had an important role within this conference and exhibition. And Stroud and I worked on that. But I would like to mention that it seemed to me to be a very strong opening up of the connections between artists working with this new media. So Manfred Moore, first of all, showed his 
uh, computer-based work there. This was the first time that he showed it in an exhibition. Frida Narka talked about his work in the conference part. Gustav Metzger both showed in the exhibition and talked in the conference. And Stroud and I worked there too. We worked on an interactive art piece because we were really saying that interactive art will be the future. Stroud is on the telephone there, and that's me standing looking at him. Uh, this was the piece we made. I'm not going to describe it because there isn't time, but it was um, an interactive art piece using a teletype and a graph plotter used to illustrate what interactive art could be. And in the symposium itself, we presented this paper, the creative process where the artist is either amplified or superseded by the computer. And this was kind of like a manifesto uh, that set the thing going at Leicester Polytechnic at that time. We also talked to the Computer Arts Society. Um, we were developing software packages for artists. Um, we had a group which we called the Combined Study Group, again, across disciplines. And so it was very lively. And at, at this time, Leicester Polytechnic was formed, so our two institutions were brought together. And people from both sides of the art and technology divide worked together. And then, so the next year, Stroud organized the second invention of problems. And this was really interesting um, because we brought together a lot of people who were <laughs> very um, imaginative and very much exploring the future that lay before us. Gavin Bryars, the composer, uh, John Lifton, Joe Tilson, Edward Inartovich, I have already mentioned, and Stephen Willits. So these people came together at Leicester Polytechnic, sharing their ideas and promoting their different views of the future. My contribution was partly in the exhibition where I put up my first networked art piece. And so it's hard to think about it today, but this is before the World Wide Web pretty much before the internet, but it was nevertheless the whole notion of networked art was what I was looking at. Stephen Willis, very important figure still today and certainly then, um, put on an exhibition the next year in Nottingham called uh, Cognition and Control. And he invited Stroud and myself to participate in this. So this was a very valuable move forward. So we were not just working within the Polytechnic, we were spreading out. A few things happen next. And let me just mention a, a couple that matter. Um, first of all, I was actually working in the computing department. In fact, I started to run it. Um, and I was given a research studentship that I was able to allocate to someone who could do a PhD in computing. And of course, it's maybe not surprising that I thought, well, can't I give this to someone who could look into computing and art? Uh, I rang the funding body and got their agreement that this was okay, because it maybe would have been thought to be a bit peculiar at the time. And then I talked to Stroud, and he told me about Stephen Scrivener, who'd been around in uh, what was then Leicester Polytechnic, but had moved 
to the slide. We'll hear more about the slide later from others. And Stephen came to do a PhD with us. Trying to get it with the sounds on this. And many other things happened then. Because Stephen was at the Slade, I went and went there and met Malcolm Hughes, who you've already heard about. Malcolm was an important figure uh, in the systems group. And it turned out that two important, other important people, Susan Tebby and Colin Jones, worked at Leicester Polytechnic. So there was a very strong relationship there between us. And we developed a, a very good relationship between myself and others at Leicester Polytechnic and the Slade through Malcolm. I would say that although he, for most of his life anyway, didn't use computers, he and others in the systems group were very interested in this development in the future. And he said to me that what we were doing at Leicester Polytechnic, the whole scene at Leicester Polytechnic, was, I quote, the future. So this was a, an important step forward uh, in forming that relationship and the systems group in general uh, who were doing things that led into a lot of the software art that followed uh, was very important and was very much encouraged by the slave anyway, but more of that later. A couple of other things I want to just say before I finish is that maybe this was one of the first meetings discussing art and AI in 1976. We held this meeting at Leicester Polytechnic. Um, AI people like Maggie Bowden and Robin Popperston came. People came from the Royal College of Art, Brian Reffin Smith, for example. And Edward Inartovich gave a talk here describing his understanding of how robots might work and what the real research issues were from an artist's point of view, but actually, as the other people who were at this meeting will confirm, I'm sure, contributing to AI. So this was, I think, a very important step that we made. Then we formed what was called the Human Computer Interface Research Unit. Steve Scrivener and a couple of other people and I got a very large grant. It would, in today's money, it would be worth about four and a half million pounds to look at human computer interaction. I felt at the time that although interaction was the future in art, we didn't understand it and we needed research. This drove a kind of research agenda to try to understand more about how people interact with machines. And this project did this. And our sadly lost Dominic Borum was one of the people who joined us at that time. Uh, and in the context of uh, Computer Art Society, worth remembering that he took over running Page from, from Leicester at that time and made a very valuable contribution both to our work and to the whole community. And then for various reasons that can be missed now, we moved on to Loughborough University. Steve Bell joined us. You know, I'll talk later, so maybe I needn't say more about that, but also someone from the Slade. So the Slade relationship continued there. And the future then became art and research, exploiting 
the possibilities of this new medium called the computer. And I'll stop there.